Welcome everyone uh, to our session. Um, so uh, we're going to present the Visual Studio solution for Content Hub. Uh, with it's not just a solution, but there is some code in it that that we want to reuse and, and give to you. So um, my name is Sebastian. Maybe some of you know me from from more from SXA topics, but um, I'm a solution architect at Sitecore in the professional services team. Um, I've, I've been with Sitecore now for three years, but I'm working longer with Sitecore, mostly in the XP XM area. Um, but I joined um, a Content Hub project uh, one and a half years ago, approximately. So, yeah, handing over to Leandro. Uh, my name is Leandro Fonseca. So I've been working with uh, uh, Sitecore uh, exclusively Content Hub now for six years which also means that I was uh, working with Stylab, so the former owner of uh, Content Hub. So one of the things that maybe with all the presentations that you heard about Content Hub, uh, talking about SaaS and everything is that Content Hub was not, not always SaaS. Uh, so we used to have it more in a past model, um, which means that we were deploying the whole solution uh, there. And at some point in time, yes, there was the shift uh, moving uh, into SaaS. And when we were in the past model, we did have a very structured approach on how we were building things. And we moved to SaaS and we, we kind of lost, uh, lost that in a way. Uh, so we needed to come up with an approach to be able to make it not so niche work in uh, Content Hub. We needed a way to make developers work in a way that they are used to working it. And we also needed, we needed an enterprise uh, solution uh, for that. So my work with Sebastian starts um, as Sebastian was onboarded working on a, an upgrade project, going from a PaaS solution into the SaaS solution. So, which meant that we need to change the approach that we're working with. And going and creating all the scripts, which you all have heard for sure, uh, from uh, Content Hub, uh, all the migration of that code base into the SaaS uh, solution. Now, we had before, we were deploying the full solution there, which meant that we were building our extensions on top of the product uh, itself. So we could, not saying that we should, we could change a lot of behaviors of the product back in the day. We could have put our own DLLs and stuff like that, because basically we own the full deployment uh, pipeline. Uh, so we could in, infer with the product, put our own changes on, on top of it. Then we changed to SaaS. So then we changed the approach. So now we have uh, scripts, basically the extension points that the product provides. Now that can be debatable because we did lose a, a bit of our uh, agility from that, but remove some of the responsibility of deploying the whole solution there. You are building on top of a box that is provided for you, which it is more comfortable, but yes, you have to say a bit more no to the customer when they say, I want to change this. Yeah, uh, not uh, anymore. Now, coming to that, yes, all the approach that we had before on the past solution, some of that we cannot just port it out. It's, there's no way to do that, which means migration. There's a code base that needs to be changed from what we worked before. And changing a project from point A to B, in that case, from being PaaS to SaaS, yes, it is code migration. There's no copy pasting, just and it will work. So we needed to come up with a migration path, stuff like that, which when Sebastian started to work uh, on the project, we already had uh, um, a whole uh, investigation before how to migrate from one path to the other. So at least we didn't have to work <laughs> on that right. to check the requirements to do that. We already had uh, our mappings uh, done. So uh, 
keep in mind the things that you see on the left hand side they are a bit technical from what content hub was uh, we had the uh, command handlers which was the way that we reacted to changes and we need to migrate that into scripts we did communicate with external systems directly from content hub and that changed to azure functions uh, that we have and also some cron jobs and timer triggered functions that we had used to exist on the content hub and we shifted that uh, into other functions. There is of course as well, because our presentation today is focused on the backend, but there's also a uh, front end uh, extension that you can make. We'll not cover those today, uh, talking about some JavaScript components that we can build there. And of course, it comes about the talk about deployment. How do I shift my changes between environments? And that goes with the import export tool. But whereas before we used to have a system of patches that we apply in the system. And now, since we don't own the backend anymore, we don't go to the backend, we use the import uh, export tool. Now, building the, the scripts, yes, uh, using a, <laughs> a, an online uh, editor for that, uh, copy pasting, doing code in line. It's a nice presentation piece, but on an enterprise, yes, you don't, you don't actually use that. Uh, you really need to have your tools. Uh, so the online editor is nice. You can put it there, code to test something, but you cannot really develop as a team uh, on it, right? Uh, so you can go there, put your script and build it, but we needed something more uh, familiar. Uh, we needed our own uh, UI that you're used to working with, Visual Studio, make our scripts working and uh, being able to push it uh, into a solution. So we need to be able to have our same requirements that we had before. We need to be able to debug our scripts. We need to be able to do testing, automated testing on our scripts. And yes, we do mention here unit testing, but Yes, a flavor of integration testing, testing as well. You'll see when Sebastian will present it that we are connected to Content Hub instance. And even though Sebastian will show that, you could get in ways that you have a fully realized test that you don't have an environment uh, for that. So we need to be able to push uh, our scripts as well at the environment, not any of that copy pasting uh, thing that works, but as we all know, <laughs> it can be very error prone. You copy paste something wrong, there you go. There you, you're failing. And we, we wanted to, to avoid that. So that's why we came up with a Visual Studio solution for that and the script pusher it allows us for, I build my script, I can test it locally, push it to Content Hub. Of course, that will be then a manual test on Content Hub directly to test the script uh, itself. But at, when you go at that level, you're already sure that your script is working as it should. Maybe question to you. So how many of you come from the XP XM world? Yeah, I, I expected having nearly everyone coming from that. And, and how many of you are currently or have been involved into content hub projects so far? Okay, also quite some. That's, uh, I didn't expect that to be honest, but that's good. Um, so. Still, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Content Hub, um, I would like to go a bit into what Content Hub is in a nutshell. You might have seen that with a presentation yesterday by Simon. Um, so, um, yeah, there, there could be some repetition now. But um, so if we remember the XM and XP days, right? So I think most of us went through the developer presentation uh, or the developer course. And I think on slide one, we hear uh, the dogma that everything an item, uh, everything in Sitecore is an item, and uh, an item is described through a template. So all the all the fields you have, the whole data structure. Now that apply, applies to some extent also to Content Hub. So I would say nearly everything uh, is an entity in in Content Hub. So that's actually the the thing where you store things, and um, an entity is described through a schema. So very similar to uh, to a template in, in XP or XM. And in the schema, again, you describe what fields you want to have. Um, you describe of what field types they should be. So you can, you can define or extend um, um, entities or certain content types. 
Now, if you want to make the life easier for, for um, marketers, you want to automate things so that a marketer doesn't have to enter data manually each time, wherever you could, right? So one extension point that was mentioned by Leandro is um, a script. And it works like that, that um, you have certain events in, uh, in Content Hub. So let's assume you upload an image to your DAM system. That's an event, and the event can trigger uh, a certain action. So let's say um, I have an action that's being triggered when a new entity is being created, so saying a new asset is being uploaded, and then this action will uh, is mapped to, for example, there are uh, several op uh, opportunities, but uh, it can be, for example, an action script uh, that will run and execute some custom logic to manipulate your data, enhance the data, and so on. Or you just connect with any kind of HTTP service that, so if, if we take an Azure function, it can connect through the SDK or the API of Content Hub again and manipulate the data right in there. Or uh, we just um, have any external system connected like that and maybe export data. Um, so in the demo I want to show, uh, I'm going for an asset. So the asset is the most classical entity I would say you have in the DAM system. It represents any kind of file that you upload to the DAM system. And um, it's a very easy case. So the file always has a file name and therefore also a file extension. So based on the file extension, I want to enhance the data uh, with a content type or an asset type. So the asset type is also an entity. And I have pre-created four asset types, uh, document, image, video, and then one called generic, which is everything else. So whenever it's not a document, an image, or a video, uh, it will get the flag generic, or it will, uh, it, will be, um, um, it will be connected to the entity asset type. So there is a relation between those at the end. Let's have a look to the demo, um, and let's see how that goes. I hope that looks good. I don't have to do it like that. Um, so let's take a look into the script um, at the beginning. Let's start at the top. So what we have here is um, we're using quite some, um, some Content Hub functionality. Um, so this way we make sure we are connected to the SDK of Content Hub and we can program based on this. And um, so in our solution, we have a sample script. So that's what it's dis um, derived from. And in our sample script, um, we, um, well, we have a run method. And uh, the first thing we usually do is we derive the target entity, which represents the asset in our case that we are going to upload. So everything we know about the asset will be available in our script and we can read from it and we can enhance it with additional data. Um, the target entity we derive from the context and then yeah, passing a bit the constants here. Um, in each of the scripts, we usually use some kind of is valid method, which, um, which compares if the entity is of the type that we're actually expecting. So our script should only run for, for entities that are assets. So there could be also other entities, right? So, but we don't want to execute for those. So it's a bit of a security thing here to make sure um, it, it's not um, used in an unwanted way. And if there is an entity used that um, is not an asset, we just return and end of script. Now the business logic, let's say, as I said, it's an easy case, is uh, we derive from our target entity, so from the asset, we derive one of the properties, which is called a file name. And we use the file name to get basically the file extension. So nothing complicated here. Um, we would have IntelliSense here, right? So everything that you have in Visual Studio is available. So that wouldn't be there if you use the inline editor. Um, then we do some mapping um, so that we assign the right uh, asset type to it. And at the end, we, we set the relation. So we have, um, well, we have to get the relation first and then set the ID of the relation uh, of the asset type. So that we say, well, I have a .jpg, so we assign the asset type image. So that's what we do. Um, at the end, we have also uh, a check because scripts can run. Uh, so there are two ways scripts can, can run. The one way is in process and the other way is in background, which is kind of an asynchronous way. So in process, we have, have two ways of running it. There is a pre-commit way. So uh, we're applying our changes before the actual asset or the entity is saved. 
So um, Contitab will take care about saving it afterward because it was pre-commit. Or we can say we want to save it um, post-commit. So then we have actually to take care uh, about doing so. So that's why we are ch um, checking here the context to see what is the execution phase. And if it's actually post-commit, um, then we perform a save action here as well. So that's, that's more the, the generic part of the script, which is not being used in, a, in our case. So um, <clears throat> to run that, I've also created a test. And the test is being seen here. Um, well, I opened it already, so just quickly. Um, we are preparing a mock context. We're, we're passing basically some file extension and therefore creating a file name that matches our cases and passing also the expected asset type that we think it should be at the end. So we are creating an asset. We are setting some of the mandatory properties and the properties that um, we need for our test. We set up the context so that whenever the script reads the target entity that we've seen on the top, um, we will um, we will get it actually from the test, right? So we don't want to have it from anywhere else. We run the script and at the end, uh, we will assert if the based on the file extension, um, we will have the right asset, asset type assigned to it. So quite simple case. So let's just run our tests to see if everything is fine. While that runs, it shouldn't take long. Um, We could have also run them in debug mode, right? We could step through the uh, through the test and we could, come on, why is that? It worked 10 times and now it failed. Why is that? That's a bit, Um, so ideally they would pass now, that, that would have been my showcase. Um, yeah. Sorry? Yeah, let's try that quickly. It's anyway, small solution. No. Yeah, okay. So ideally in my showcase, they would go right and they did 10 times before now. Now they fail. I, I, I think I have to talk to the demo god here. So let's see how the rest of the demo goes. Um, assuming the test went fine, uh, we can now sync that or push that to our sandbox environment in Content Hub. So let me also do that. Um, so we have a command line uh, uh, application for that and we can start that. And what we will see is that it checks if the script has actually changed. Okay, again, unexpected. You don't have network. I don't have network, you're right. So that's the thing about the scripts. Uh, they are connected to the sandbox itself. So ah. the testing that uh, Sebastian just did requires to be connected to the sandbox. So that's why it failed immediately. Right. At least we were able to check that now, otherwise just a rejected pull request. Thanks. Yeah, so see, <laughs> let's, let's go back in time. So they are green. Let's, <laughs> let's push again. Thanks, Leandro. Um, So it says the content has changed and we see an error. This one is expected, so no worries. Um, so what it's telling us in the message is that we're using some uh, prohibited attribute or we're using some prohibited um, DLL with the system IO. So the system IO is not available in Content Hub and we are using it on the code. And there, there can, so it shows that there can be a mismatch on 
on what we have locally running and, and also testing positive, I mean testing that it's fine, but it doesn't actually run and build in Content Hub. So the push mechanism is showing us that, and what we can do is we can quickly fix that. So we have used the system IO path method or the path um, to um, get the extension. Now, as system IO is not available, I've prepared a method mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, that, that does that for us. So let's save and try it again. should have tested before. <laughs> Didn't think of the Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, so it's there. So let's have a look on our con Content Hub instance. Yeah. Um, so what we will do is we can check quickly. I think we're a bit late in time, right? That's all good. So um, let's check uh, if the script is actually there. So we go into the manage area where basically that's a developer's home and uh, we see our script. So it is there, it has been synchronized and um, we could, we could, um, yeah, we could edit it here, but it will not be synchronized back into our Visual Studio solution. So it's just a push, right? And we don't want to work in here. I think it's, I mean, we could, but it's not very convenient. So, um, the, the push script also creates an action for us and um, the action has to be then manually um, created uh, or connected to the trigger. So just quickly showing the trigger. Um, there we go. Click on the. So we have created a trigger that fires on an entity creation. That's what I said. It's an in-process in script, so it runs either pre-commit or post-commit. We have the, com uh, the condition that it only runs for the M asset, even though we check that in our script as well, but we do that here uh, uh, yeah, twice. So, and, and in this case, we just check that the file name property is not empty because we require that in our script. And on the actions tab, we can see that, um, the, um, that we have a pre-commit script, right? And we have connected our script um, like that. Now, if we want to upload now a new image, let's see if it actually works. So, let's drag and drop this image. And it's done. So, it takes a while to generate the, the thumbnail, but here's our new asset. And um, if we take a look, we can see that the type has been set with the asset type entity. So. I could also do it from here, but we want our editors to save time to not do it manually. That, that was the idea. Jumping back to the presentation. Right. Um, at this point, um, not all of us, uh, not all of that was created by us. So a part of us um, created actually the uh, script pusher. So thanks to Mikola for doing so, and thanks for letting it present us here. And um, yes, so doing that like we do it is not the only way you could do things with Content Hub and interact with this. So there is also a developer experience team uh, caring about developer experience, which this uh, goes into. So you might have seen that there is already a CLI available for Content Hub, even though it has right now limited functionality. So it, right now it's not covering all what, what you've seen with the Visual Studio solution, but we know they're ramping up. I mean, we're not making any promises. We're not product, but um, um, yeah, they, they are um, constantly including also the features that you have seen now with the uh, Visual Studio solution. Um, there's documentation um, about that. Um, there is uh, the change log, so you can see what features are available and from what version. And um, there's also in the Cycle chat um, already a channel for content of questions if you, if you need to know something. Um, yes, 
So, handing over to you again. All right. Uh, so, when you talk about the, the solution that, that we have here, one of our thought process would, was, at, also with conversation with Sebastian, is that can we apply the same Helix principles here at, at this stage? Well, it is a layered approach that we take here, but it's not Helix uh, at this stage. And, and I'm no expert on Helix, I'm only on Content Hub. Uh, working, but you also have to understand that being a SaaS solution, our footprint that we have there, it's much smaller. So we are only putting there our extensions. We are not deploying the full product. So the solution itself becomes smaller in, in scale. So which means that we cannot have all those projects uh, uh, applied with that the same way that we have Helix. I mean, definitely I think we could, but it would be overkill. Uh, for what we are deploying at this stage. So we do share, um, we do have a base layer uh, that we apply to the project that would be, if you can help me out, we call the foundation the foundation layer, yeah. which, which on our stage, we, on Content we call it the base. Um, and then we have our uh, implementation layer, which we share between our commands and, um, and Azure functions. The things about the scripts is that the scripts, well, they will deploy it in Content Hub, so we cannot share classes or anything with the, with the scripts there, even though there is the shared script concept, but we have not explored that um, in the solution. So we do have a layered approach there, and also have in a way that you can have code that you might share between different customer implementations, uh, if you will. Now, the way that, that we have it there, we have our uh, Visual Studio projects, uh, as, as uh, I'm showing here. And now uh, at this stage, we'll show you, we also have the description, but I will show you directly on the Visual Studio how the solution actually looks like. All right. Um, now that we have the solution, let me just collapse these guys right here. So going uh, from the top, right, we have our uh, base layer. Uh, the base layer here would be where we put all features which we would uh, say that they are Content Hub uh, specific. They don't depend on the customer. So even though that here you have all the projects, this could even come from a a new get package uh, that you get somewhere because this is something that you want to share across the, the implementations. Uh, so the way that we have organized this is that we have our features uh, that we apply here. And when you talk about base, they are mostly technical. There's no uh, business um, relevance here. So we are talking about uh, crowd operations, logging, um, and SDK features that we need to pull in because at this stage, Directly, base is the only one that knows the SDK and the other lower layers, um, let's say higher, upper layers, will reference that and they will uh, inherit the SDK uh, usage. Uh, so basically, we, we use uh, dependency injection a lot. So everything for us uh, becomes like a service uh, that we have. And then we are using that on our implementations. So that covers uh, base here. And base will be the one that will be dependent on the Content Hub version. Uh, for example, this would be the part that we would be versioning uh, in that way. Uh, now, from executable point of view, implementations, uh, Sitecore uh, CH implementation, is your base library for that specific implementation. So on our approach, uh, what we did is basically that we are growing the implementation layer and then you start to see, okay, I'm building something that this is a bit more generic and that would be promoted to become part of base uh, if it's not customer uh, specific. So again, doubling down the approach that we have features. In this case, we don't have that much implement implemented here. Uh, we just have the sample uh, service the, that we have. Uh, to be used. And then when we start going down as well, we have our base command line. This is a bit of uh, extension of the CLI. Uh, it's not using the CLI, it's our own 
uh, command line. This would be where you want to run some migration commands or some ad hoc commands that you need to change uh, into, into the into Content Hub. So at this stage, the feature that we have here, uh, we are talking again, it's still base, so it's still generic commands that any Content Hub implementation on that specific version should be able to use, not customer uh, specific. And then you go into the specifics themselves uh, that you'd have the implementation command line because if there are some specific commands for that customer, then you leave it at this layer. And now we are talking mostly about our executables. And when you're talking about Content Hub, at this stage, we're talking about Azure functions and commands uh, that you want to execute. We'll not dive a lot into the Azure function, but at least taking this approach, you'd share the same code base for running your Azure functions as you do with your command line, um, uh, command line commands uh, that you need. Of course, with the Azure Functions, again, same structure, features, and then you have our features that we apply here. Our approach is that the functions themselves are just a gateway uh, for the Azure Functions runtime. You'd mostly want all the code base to run on services. You'd still have the ability to add specific services on the Azure Functions side, but you'd want to keep that only what is specific to the Azure uh, Function environment. If it's something that's more generic, then you wanted to make it on the implementation layer. If it's Content Hub generic, then you need to make it up to base. Uh, and then we have the, the script uh, pusher that uh, Sebastian was uh, showing. And of course here, the structure, it becomes a bit different. Uh, we are not specifying the scripts uh, in terms of features. But that's a bit of because of the dependency that we have the script pusher. The script pusher expects this specific directory where we put our action scripts uh, that will push it. So then we change it a bit. You have it here. What are your script types? In this case, we have an action script, which Sebastian uh, demoed. But we also have different types of scripts. So the user sign-in, uh, web API scripts, and metadata scripts uh, that can come as well. Of course, this can grow, depending if Content Hub comes with new type of scripting that we, we can apply, this could easily be extended on the uh, script pusher uh, that we have. Uh, going here, of course, the, the, the script themselves, they depend on some base classes that we, we, that we have applied for it. Uh, that's why we have here a feature called uh, base script scope. So the idea that we have, uh, how we share that is that still, when you open the action scripts, you have your feature uh, that you apply to it. So the idea would be that if I would go here and I would go with uh, Sukon, then I'm able to see all the script and code base that I actually have on that feature. As you can see here, we also have here on our uh, testing side and actually we didn't implement any service specific for Sukon, so we don't see the feature on the, the other layers. So that's the, the basic structure which we believe it can uh, be enterprise grade because we are using it on uh, enterprise clients. So this is not just something that we came up that oh, the structure looks nice. We are actually implementing it uh, this way. Of course, then we have the, the, the tests uh, that we have applied to, to it. On the test side, we are having a single uh, project for the tests, but this could be easily separated to tests for uh, the Azure functions, for the command line uh, um, commands that we have, and also for the scripting. But in this case, okay, we, we just have uh, the one here. And again, following the same structure, so you'd be able to find what are my features, where are the tests uh, that I have for it. All right, go back to the presentation. So uh, we do have a, a getting started um, uh, description uh, for this. So we do require that when you are executing this, you need a Content Hub environment to be connected with, um, ideally, you'd connect this to, to a sandbox um, because, well, if you're running tests, you can create dummy data into the system 
uh, it can occur. So you'd want to do that on a sandbox. Of course, you could still do it on a, a dev environment. Of course, if you're talking about professional, yes, the sandbox, it is kind of mandatory. You don't want to do that on uh, production. Uh, we do have the, you just need to get the, the solution uh, from that. And spoiler alert, this will be open source uh, for, for, for access. And uh, you need to have your user on Content Hub. We have on the, on the Git repository, what are the settings that we need to apply uh, for it? Because you need to have an OAuth client uh, in Content Hub that you connect to uh, with the user. And you have some settings that you need to apply it on the executable uh, projects. So the, the repo is now live. Uh, so this is something that you can download it. Uh, you can start uh, playing with it. Uh, if you see something that's not, that's not up to par from your perspective, we do accept uh, pull requests and we want to make this solution grow. And as you use it more, we will try to make more features available uh, there. All right, so at this point in time, we are open for questions. All right. Very cool, thanks for sharing. Uh, I, I just wanted to understand correctly. So you're not using the CLI to push the script towards Content Hub, but you're actually using the SDK itself Correct. to update entities, which are scripts, and then insert the script from within the Visual Studio solution. Cool. So and right. and, the, and the script you're running, uh, intended to be an internal script, is also able to run externally, right? So it depends on your scenario when you want to trigger it, but you also can run it but because that's what you're doing with your unit tests, you're just running it within Visual Studio, right? Yeah, yeah so. we mock everything. So if you yeah. want to, when you say externally, you're talking about it being processed or in background. Uh, yeah, no, no, not, no, not so much. It's More not internal run. vs. external. So if you're running internally, then you're running it on the uh, SaaS environment itself. And yeah, it's the SaaS SDK based. Package, but you can, if you run it from your own computer, then you run Correct. it externally. Yeah. I mean, the tests themselves, they give you a layer of security when you're running it. It doesn't give you that, as Sebastian showed, because your test, your test ran correctly, it does not mean 100% that that will be executable on Content Hub. So you still need to go to Content Hub to yeah. execute that. Yeah. But it will give you at least the logic that you have there, it's sound. Yeah. But then we're talking about a more integrated test. And that's something that we cannot really replicate on the local environment. So you still need to run the script on yeah. Content Hub, make sure that it's running as you expect. But in this kind of Visual Studio solution, you can also use it to run some external scripts that are not intended to be going into an internal script and run it externally, just do some batch jobs and stuff. You can do it as well. Fire the same. You can reuse your own code with it for that. Yeah, you can run that, but then you cannot push it to content update. No, but you work. may not always want to do that. But that's why we have the commands. So the yes. command is something that you want batch operations to be executed. That's, for example, the example that we have there, we have a mass delete job. Because it can happen, we need to clean up some data uh, mm -hmm. into the system, and that's an operation that you need to execute. You don't run it on tests. You have a command that just that, create my mass delete jobs. It will push to content hub. It will clean your data. Uh, so. Those are the kind of operations that we need to do. Yes, those data cleanups, they do occur. You just build a command, run it, and that's yeah. it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for the presentation. You basically, uh, I would say, uh, turned uh, my world upside down. <laughs> <laughs> I hope in a good way. <laughs> in, a, in a very good way, yeah. I'm a technical trainer for Content Hub. So, uh, yeah, I need to provide developers with the best way to operate the scripts. And uh, uh, we were lacking this practical example uh, mm -hmm. because we, use, we also use some Visual Studio examples, but they are not that sophisticated. And uh, that, yeah, I will later on haunt you on that. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, my question was a, a very small practical one. Um, 
with the trigger that you have created for the script that you have put, uh, how did you create it? Did you create it uh, also from your uh, from the Visual Studio created? No, oh, it's not possible. Uh, no, no. I mean, it would be possible, but the, it's very specific the trigger configuration. So if we would build something for that, we could have built for that version. But then, if the product would change something with that, of course, they would have to migrate all the triggers in the solution. Then our solution would be out of date. Yeah. Uh, the thing that we are doing, we're pushing the scripts and we are creating the actions. Oh, yeah. the, the trigger itself then needs to be created on Content Hub. Yeah. Uh, so the same way that, through the UI, basically. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you first, normally you, you would first push the script and uh, create the action and then you create the trigger that uh, is connected to the action. Exactly, yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Maybe as an addition, the action is created along with the push. So you oh, don't yeah. have to create the action, but you have to create the trigger. Yeah, okay. And to your question on how to work with it, really watch out what's coming with the next releases of developer oh, yeah. experience. So there is something coming. Uh, not sure how feature parity is reached with, with that solution. And if you have any way, or if you prefer working with Visual Studio, then uh, maybe that's what you want to do. Um, yeah, okay, thanks a lot, thank you. And something worth mentioning uh, from an uh, import export package perspective, the scripts themselves, they are all created with the identifier based on the namespace that you have on the code base. So you don't get a random GUID on the export package for that. You have specifically for that script with the namespace on your code base. The last question. Thank you, gentlemen. Great presentation. Uh, one thing is you said in order to be able to deploy this, you need a Content Hub dev environment. Is that still something that can be done with a sandbox? Yes, uh, so we do it against sandboxes. Okay. But you could do it against basically any environment, right? You, you provide the connection strings, okay. but you need to have a Content Hub SaaS environment for it. Yeah. So this is my leading question to publicly state that if anybody needs a sandbox, uh, please, we have them available. They're for a nominal charge. If you're an MVP, you actually get a $50 credit for a sandbox as well. And if you need access to that, I'm here in the back. I'd be happy to give you that $50 credit for the sandbox. Great. Yeah. Thank you. I think we've got time for one more. Anyone? Did you experience any other limitations of what you can do? We saw that, of course, some I.O. Um, binaries are not there, but I was surprised that you can just, you know, create dependencies of all the binaries and everything is fine. But is there other limitations that you experienced? Um, I mean, there are some, in some edge cases, that you cannot replicate 100% on the local environment what comes from Content Hub. So there are some edge cases, for example, on a create action, uh, the way that Content Hub creates the asset that you replicate it that way on your script, but when you actually go to Content Hub, some properties might come only later. So you might have that, okay, even though your script ran, your test is correct, you go into Content Hub, while well, the experience is slightly different. It's not that high uh, the, from our experience, but there are, some uh, edge cases there. And one of the things that we have not leveraged yet is the shared scripts. Uh, so we on our script still have a lot of boilerplate that we put there so for logging and so on, which we do uh, expect now that it's being rolled out, I believe from 4.1 of Content Hub, the shared script, we will need to refactor a bit to make it work. Mm -hmm.